For as long as most consumer products have existed, companies have been looking for ways to make them last longer, work better, and be more valuable to customers. After all, who doesn't want a stain-free carpet, a rain jacket that actually keeps them dry, or a non-stick frying pan that makes cooking and cleanup a breeze? To create better stain-proof, waterproof, and non-stick products, American companies began using a group of man-made chemicals known as perfluoroalkyl substances, or PFAS, in the late 1940s. Technologies like non-stick cookware, stain-proof carpeting, waterproofing sprays for upholstery and fabrics, fast food containers, and weatherproofed gloves and boots have all been produced using PFAS chemicals. For decades, PFAS chemicals have been used in the manufacture of everyday items like carpeting, upholstery, clothing, flooring, cookware, food packaging, paint, polishes, and even dental floss and cosmetics. There are dozens of chemicals in the PFAS family. Some of the more widely used ones include PFOS, PFOA or C8, and Gen X. All PFAS chemicals contain the chemical element known as fluorine. And you may notice that a PFAS containing product like a water repellent spray has an ingredient with the word fluoro in its ingredients list. It's important to remember that not all stain repellents, water repellents, or non-stick products are made with PFAS chemicals. All around the world today, PFAS chemicals are showing up in the environment. Animals like fish, birds, polar bears, and whales, and even humans from all across the planet have been found to have PFAS in their blood, meaning that these chemicals are somehow moving from the factories where they are being made through the natural environment and into our bodies. But how are PFAS getting into the environment and from our environment into our bodies? Because there are so many different chemicals in the PFAS family, scientists still don't fully understand all of the sources of PFAS nor how they move through the environment. But they do know that PFAS can enter the air, water, and soil at places where they are made, used, spilled, or thrown away. Scientists also know that once PFAS chemicals are in the environment, they will stay there for a very long time and can travel long distances through air and water. Things like sunlight and bacteria will not break down PFAS chemicals. People are exposed to PFAS when they inhale contaminated air or indoor dust, by swallowing contaminated food and water, or by using certain household products. Most scientists believe that swallowing contaminated food and water is the main way that PFAS enter your body. Food that was stored in packaging coated with PFAS or cooked using non-stick cookware coated with PFAS can become contaminated. Babies and toddlers tend to put their fingers and objects into their mouth as they learn about the world around them. If an object your baby chews on is contaminated with PFAS chemicals, he or she may swallow some of the chemical. Also, because babies and toddlers are closer to the ground and often crawl around on carpet, they are more likely than adults to breathe in PFAS dust. PFAS do not easily absorb through the skin. Simply touching an object that is coated in PFAS or bathing in PFAS contaminated water does not create much chance for exposure. Just like PFAS in the environment can stay there for a long time, PFAS chemicals can stay in a person's body for a long time. A blood test can show you whether you have PFAS in your body, but these tests are not common and many doctors may not have them available. If you think you may have been exposed to PFAS, check with your primary care provider to find out whether they can either perform this test for you or if they can refer you to another doctor who can. Because there are so many different chemicals in the PFAS family, scientists don't yet fully understand what levels of exposure to PFAS may cause health problems. Certain PFAS chemicals, like PFOA and PFOS, have been studied more than other chemicals in that family, so their health effects are better understood than others. Research is still ongoing, but many studies have shown a relationship between PFAS chemicals in the body and a higher chance of certain diseases. Some, but not all, studies in humans show that certain PFAS chemicals may raise cholesterol, harm the immune system, increase the risk of thyroid disease, change the body's natural hormone levels, increase the risk of high blood pressure and preeclampsia in pregnant women, lower fertility, 
and increase the risk of certain cancers. One study of 70,000 Ohio and West Virginia residents frequently exposed to PFOA through their drinking water over several years showed a high likelihood that drinking PFOA raised their chance of getting several diseases, including high cholesterol, ulcerative colitis, thyroid disease, and kidney cancer. In addition to data collected from humans, scientists are studying the effects of PFAS chemicals on animals like mice and rats. Animal studies can be useful in trying to understand what effects a chemical may have on humans, but it's important to know that not all effects that happen in an animal will also happen in a human. In rodents, PFAS chemicals caused liver damage and damage to the immune system. Mice pups showed birth defects. Scientists continue to work to understand whether these problems may also be present in humans exposed to PFAS. Because PFAS are so widespread in the environment today, it is difficult to avoid all exposure to PFAS chemicals, but there are ways that you can reduce your exposure. If you know that your source of drinking water, such as a private well, is contaminated with PFAS, start using an alternative source of clean drinking water, such as bottled water or public water. Some kinds of filters may be useful, but be aware that not all filters work for PFAS. Avoid household products that were made using chemicals in the PFAS family. Instead of non-stick coated pots and pans, opt for cast iron, stainless steel, ceramic, or other cookware that does not use a non-stick coating. For furniture, rugs, carpets, upholstery, and other home textiles, don't use an optional stain repellent spray. Skip non-stick food packaging like french fry cartons and microwave popcorn bags, and find alternative options. Make popcorn the old-fashioned way on the stove, and take your fries on a plate. Carefully read the ingredient list on makeup and other personal care products. Avoid products with ingredients that have fluoro or perfluoro in the name. With PFAS so widespread in the environment today, it can be hard to avoid all exposure, and for many people, that can be concerning. As more information about PFAS chemicals and their effects on your health becomes available, the Ohio Department of Health will be closely following along to create and adjust its protective recommendations to protect the health of all Ohioans. The U.S. Environmental Protection Agency is also working to establish limits on the amount of PFAS in drinking water. For more information about PFAS chemicals and their health effects, please visit our website or contact us.